Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Greg. I'm going to go over the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin more specifically. Um, I was going to show some guys some some things on this move that it made up top here on the uh, Bitcoin chart, guys, right up here, this move. Um, one of the things I'm paying attention to to see if, if it did a significant correction right there, boom, and then it's going to go back up and touch this channel, okay? This is this pattern right here is looking pretty similar. At least it's starting not to be pretty similar to the 2019 area pattern. But one thing that I posted on Twitter uh, for some people was that if you take this um, move that it made, more or less, just like so, and you can see this move is a nice boom, 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 a one to one move right there. Okay. Um, that's significant, significant in my opinion, because more than likely this move is telling you, you have a high probability that Bitcoin is in a correction. Okay. Normally in a correction going this way, I'm not saying it's done, but it's giving you a clue. And I'll show you an example of that, how that works, but with the 2019. So normally, you know, you'd want to see this go all the way down here where you get 1.618 down here and then a correction and maybe another one and then you have a move like that and that's telling you that's a reversal it's three-wave swing to come back down again guys okay so let me go over to 2019 and i'll show you what i'm talking about okay to get, put this in perspective a little bit okay you see this move that it made right here this move right here right off the top you got a move down there to right there and you pull it up here, and you can see this move, boom, boom, boom. You got a three-way move off the top. Normally, what that's telling you, that's giving you a clue. It's giving you a high probability, not a guarantee, but a high probability that what Bitcoin is doing here is it's going through its correction of this leg right here, okay? Um, usually at the end of the trend, you won't have three-way moves on the top, okay, like that, up here, just like over here with Bitcoin, guys, okay? Normally, you won't have a move like this, okay? Now, it's very deceptive because it is a three-way move pullback, right? Three-way move pullback seems like it'd be right there, but I don't think it's done yet, guys. Uh, I don't think it's done because what you're going to have is... I'm kind of expecting Bitcoin to go up and touch that channel again. It's following the channel pretty good. And you see, you take another one of those and you put it right over here just like that. Boom. And then that's going to be a connector wave right there. Okay. And then your wave pattern is going to be just like this. It'll probably be a W, your X wave, and then back down for your Y. WXYs like to go in channels just like that. WXYs like to go right inside channels, guys, and they'll, they'll follow this channel all the way down. You, well, this just like this channel over here. Just like this channel right over here, guys. You know? It went from the top of it to the to the bottom, to the top, to the bottom, back to the top, swung back down here, to the uh, to the bottom, midsection, top, back up to the top, all the way back down there, mid, back down top, and then it finally, on this wave, it popped out of that channel. That uh, section was complete and then finished it off right over there. Now, I'm not saying that Bitcoin is going to do this type of move. It could. It could. And you can see in this move, 786, that's 618. And all the way down there, it wicked to 786. It could do that, guys. Um, you know, I'm not expecting it yet. I want to see how this is going to unfold. So, like I said in my previous videos, somewhere around the end of June, I'm um, seeing what's going to happen right around the end of June, guys, you get this back down here. But this this is going down, in my opinion. So short-term, medium-term, I'm bearish on Bitcoin. Um, and then evaluate once it gets down to June. And then if, is it going to make another additional wave? You know, once it's done with this sequence right here, right, in that area, you know, what is it going to do again? Is it going to start off again? Or is it going to do another one of those, guys? Just don't know. Don't know. Um, you know, if you're huge on Bitcoin, right? If I was going to do it, I probably will do it just in case you probably want to have orders for 20,200, you know, buy orders 
and 786, just in case this decides to boom, boom, and bat pop back up down there, guys. And um, it, it could do that. So now with the overall picture with Bitcoin, this is going to matter how long this is going to take and how deep this is going to go to deter, you know, and that's going to be the determining factor of what uh, Bitcoin is going to be doing in the uh, latter part of 2023 or going into 2024, okay? Um, the only way the four-year cycle is going to fit is this This needs to, to, to go on for a lot longer um, because once the third wave starts, well, I guess you know, it could go on like here's July and then it's going to wound back up and then come back down like that and then, um, you know, start making its way up and get stuck in these areas once again. So, yeah, maybe it could fit in a four-year cycle, guys. But this wave is not going to be, you know, if the wave is only this big, you know, the wave's only this big, then uh, the wave over here, you know, those numbers that people are going to come up with, 150,000 and things like that, um, I don't, it's not going to go with the wave that big, guys. It's just not. So here's, look how big that wave is. And then you see how big that, it produced the wave that big. Um, well, this is one third the size of that. So this wave over here is probably going to be, you know, about that, you know, not this size, but I would say not one third, but, you know, 1.618. 1.618 is what it's going to hit, guys. More than likely, 1.618. Just if it say corrects all the way down to, Let's give it, uh, let's go, let's say it wicks all the way down to 19,100. 1.618 is 59,000 right there. And then uh, a fifth wave target would be 2.0 and 2.27. Can it hit these numbers? 2.618? Yes, it can. It, def it definitely can. And the way I think that that could happen is if it melts up. If it melts up, which I think is pos a good possibility is going to happen with the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Okay, back here with the S&P 500. Here's the situation I'm looking at. I think this is going to be a pretty decent long trade. Think about this, okay? Um, if you check the data on the SPY and the Qs, it is at the shorts are piling in at the highest level they have ever piled into since the great financial crisis, okay? Now, they're getting in there, and it's pretty obvious that there's a topping pattern on the SPY and the Qs, um, the NASDAQ as an example. Um, but the trend is still up and to the right. The trend this way is uh, much stronger than it is this way. So it's kind of a risky game, in my opinion. Are they going to get some downside? Yeah, they will. But here's what's going to happen, in my opinion. This could happen. So you have a wave in this section, and they're piling in, and then there's going to be a correction, right, down to this area. Okay, something like that with the uh, SPY and the Qs, the NASDAQ, as an example. I don't think the NASDAQ is going to correct much, guys. I think this trend on the NASDAQ is getting is too strong, um, real, world strong. But it remains to be seen. We'll see what's going to happen. But they're going to come down, and, and this, this is going to start happening, right? But the, the narrative is this is supposed to happen, okay? All the way back down here and break the low of 3,500, more or less. I don't think that's going to happen, guys. I don't think anything like that is going to be happening with the traditional financial markets. What I think could possibly happen is that these can go up. The, the SPY and the NASDAQ may go up higher than expected. Um, the reason why is I think it's melt up from all the shorts because they're going to be shorting down and then it's going to come back up to these areas again. And they're going to uh, start coming in with the shorts and everything. And then it, it can melt that up, guys. Kind of like what it's been doing uh, recently with the SPY the Qs and also the, uh, you know, the NASDAQ guys, you know, which the Qs is the proxy of the NASDAQ, right? And they could come back down and these, uh, these can melt up even more guys, just like they've been doing. Um, because the bears, in my opinion, with everything that's going on, um, the bears are overconfident. They are super optimistic. They are super optimistic. And that's a very dangerous place to be in trading, guys, to be super optimistic that that is going to happen, okay? Just because you draw it on your chart and you have negative uh, sentiment out in the media and you have negative news out in the media, 
doesn't mean that that's going to happen, guys. This trend is strong. I posted about this on Twitter. This trend, this general trend, just like this, is pretty strong in the TradFi markets, guys, um, on the weekly. Same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin on the weekly, you know, it has a strong trend. The weekly chart is still a strong trend, guys. It's just in a correction, you know. So you see how that's going to work with the S SPX and the SPY, guys, is I think that that could happen. And then this, this could be the trade right here in the SPY, okay? It's going to come down, right? Let's say wherever this is going to decide to do a correction to these areas. I'm going to take my box off. That was my original target, but in this area, and then these, these could melt up even higher because the bears are going to create this wave, guys. It's going to melt up. It's going to keep melting up. Um, you know, they're taking all their data and they're just overconfident. They're so, they're just so overconfident. It reminds me of Bitcoin in this, this area how confident everybody was that this is going to 100K, okay? 100K, guys. And this is the same thing. They're super optimistic, okay? So I don't think that's going to be happening, guys. I do not think that's going to be happening. And, you know, um, it's just, it's going to trend up and to the right for most of 2023. That's what the data is suggesting based on these, the wave patterns and everything that's going on with it right now, guys. I know it just sounds, it's just, if people are like, how can this be? How can this be? You know, debt ceiling, the banking crisis, and on and on and on and on and on. Um, let's go to the S&P 500. Interest rates. People keep going, interest rates. Let's go to the S&P 500. In 1982, 1982, what's going on in SP 500? 1982, right over here, guys. Check this out. Where's 1982? Where am I? 1982. Oh, okay, you see this right here? It went up, and this was the mega recession right here, guys, from 1982, August of 1982. That pretty nasty downtrend right there, but this was the mega recession. Okay, but it went up after that. Look at that, up and then up and like this, just like that, all the way up to the 1987 crash. Pretty decent moves, pretty decent moves up, guys, right? You know what the interest rates were back then? And 28%, 29% drop. It did a massive 70% move. And then this is real massive, guys, right there from 84. You know what the interest rates were right here, guys? Interest rates. You want to buy a house. You want to buy a house, 13%. 13%. And uh, over here, people are panicking. People are panicking about 5% right here. Markets have a way of adjusting to, to, uh, to stuff like that, guys. Markets will adjust to that, just like people will adjust to that. That's why markets are going to adjust to that, because people are going to adjust to that. What are they going to say? I'm not going to buy a house. 6%, man. JP's going to bring it back down to zero, man. I'm just going to wait. Uh, yeah, good luck with that. You know what they're going to do? They're going to buy the house. That's what they're going to do. They're going to buy the house because they have no choice, right? Or they're going to keep on renting, right? They're going to keep on renting. That's how that's going to work. That's why markets adjust, guys. The markets are going to adjust through people's behavior. Like, ah, oh, it's 6% right now. But what if they go like this? Hey, wait a second, man. If they're 6% right now, what if they're going to raise them up to 9%? Better lock it in. Lock it in. Boom. So it doesn't do that. So that's how that goes, guys. You know, it's like people are looking at everything in a negative way. Um, the problem is with uh, most of the people in today's uh, participants is that they're used to. They think all the economy has to work. Ben Bernanke came up with this 0% stuff, guys. He's the one that started this. Okay. So from here. To here with those low, 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 low interest rates, boom, they just think that, oh, that's how it always needs to work. But maybe that's not the case. You know, go back and take a look. Not always the case. It can adjust to that, guys. And I have a sneaky suspicion that the uh, Fed keeps saying higher for longer. I don't think they're joking about that, guys. I don't think they're joking about that higher for longer. Because one thing they know. Look at Japan. 
Japan is failing, guys. And they've been having low QE since what the 90s to early 2000s, however long it's been going. It's not working. It's not working. And they're like, hey, you know, th that's not going to work. Let the markets adjust. Let the markets take care of it. Let the markets adjust to these interest rates. Let them do it. And they will. And um, what will happen, guys? You go back to SP 500, you'll go through the negative times when things are going down, just like right over here. Um, you know, maybe in this area, people are like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's the end of the world. Get gold, get water, get your 25 year old, 25 year, uh, your food that lasts for 25 years because this is it. But then it's business as usual. Oh, here's another one. Crash. All right, guys. That's how I'm looking at that. No, it's a little bit of a joke. But Bitcoin, go back over here to Bitcoin, guys. Um, Bitcoin is just going to be in a correction for a little while, okay? Like I said, one month, uh, uh, end of June, end of June, check that area out and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, have some prayers at night that uh, Bitcoin doesn't do that. Or you might take that as an opportunity, guys. But what I'm going to be doing is checking out some of the coins, other coins that are strong. And Bitcoin's coming down to this area to get ready for that wave over here. And uh, checking out some coins to get ready for that wave again over there, guys. Okay. Uh, most people are going to uh, be terrified of this. I think they're going to probably be, be even more terrified um, of this than they were right here. Okay. So this right here is going to be a replay. It's going to be a replay right over here, guys. It's going to be round two. Round two is coming up, more or less. And um, it's all going to zero type mentality, guys. But like I said, it's going to be by the dip opportunity coming up in the next couple weeks, three, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Depends on how this all goes uh, goes down, guys, okay, in my opinion. If you made it all the way to the end, do me a huge favor. Drop a like. Hit the subscribe button. Peace.